This is the LG G3, a new premium smartphone that LG is hoping will hold its own with the likes of the iPhone 5S and the Galaxy S5. Let's take a look at its key features. The G3 runs on Android KitKat, it has a 2.5 GHz processor, and it has either 2 GB or 3 GB of RAM, depending on the version that you buy. That's all more or less what you'd expect of a premium smartphone, however. So we're going to talk more about the design, the camera, and that screen. So one of the most striking things about the G3 is its sheer size. This is a five and a half inch screen, which is bordering on phablet territory. In your hand, it feels big, but it is actually quite light, which is a nice feature, no doubt to do with the brushed aluminium case. Like its predecessor, the G3 moves the side buttons you'd usually expect on a smartphone to its back. These help you turn the volume up and down and turn the phone screen on and off, just like you'd expect on a regular smartphone. We found with the G2 though, it does take a bit of getting used to, particularly if you've been used to using any of the other rivals of the G3. The G3 has a 13 megapixel camera, neither a huge amount of megapixels nor a small amount. But like a lot of the, its rival companies, LG decided to focus on a few small parts of the camera to make it stand out. First of all, there's the OIS, that's the optical image stabilization. This was the feature on the G2, and here LG have claimed to improve it by around 20%. That means that when you take a photograph, the image should come out quite clear, even if you've been moving at the time of taking it. The more major innovation though, is what's called the laser autofocus. This uses technology, not unlike a police speed trap gun, to fire a laser out and therefore instantly focus on your subject. This theoretically means that you should be able to take a picture in a fraction of a second. So you've heard of 4K, Ultra HD, Retina, now LG is using Quad HD. It's not a new technology to HD, but it is the first time it's been used in a phone of this size. So we've already mentioned that the phone is 5.5 inches. That means it, it basically packs in over 500 pixels per inch. That is, well, getting almost beyond as much as your eyes can see. Although LG did just spend a lot of time telling us how our eyes can still see that. Again, we'll be interested to get it into our labs to really see if that pixel density makes a difference in everyday use. For a phone of its size, it's 5.5 inch screen, it's actually remarkable just how light the G3 is to use. In one hand, it feels comfortable. I can't imagine my arm getting fatigued anytime soon. And really, that's a good step up for a phone of its size. Although I'm not sure I could really still use it in one hand if I was carrying a bag of shopping in the other. As for its camera, well, it's kind of hard to test a, a very busy situation like this, but from what it's seen, that laser autofocus does exactly what's advertised, lets you take focus pictures quickly. We'll be looking to take this into our lab test to get a real true feeling for how it performs in everyday use. I've also spent quite a while staring at its screen, and while I'm impressed by the fact it's got so many pixels per inch, I'm unsure if its screen looks any better to me than maybe that of the iPhone 5S or the Galaxy S5. Again, it's something that really we'll want to put into the labs and really test out. So quite naturally, what you'll be asking now is when is it out and how much does it cost? Well, these are answers I can't yet bring you. At the time of doing this video, the price is yet to be confirmed, though I'd expect north of £500, and nor has the release date, though you'll probably be expecting some time in June. Click the links below for more on the Galaxy S5, the iPhone 5S and the HTC One M8.